If you have or suspect you may have a health problem, or if you require answers to specific health care questions or concerns, you should consult your physician or health care provider and not depend solely on information presented in this program. Hello, I'm Dr. Steve Garner and welcome to Ask the Doctor. It's great to be with you today. Now this is our 16th season and as you know this program was created to assist you in understanding medical issues so you can take charge of your own health. It's more important than ever to become an informed patient and we're here to bring you timely health discussions. Now for those who are new to the show there are two ways to get your questions in. First you can call our live phone line at 718-499-6101. Second, you can email your questions to askthedoctor at netny.net and we'll bring them into our discussion. Now for this episode, we have Dr. Anna Saponia. She's internal medicine attending at the New York Methodist Hospital. Next to Dr. Saponia is Dr. Madhav Goody. He's a pulmonary attending at New York Methodist Hospital. And finally, Dr. Alexander Shaknovich, cardiology attending at New York Methodist Hospital. I want to welcome everybody and we have a great show ahead. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to this show. So are you? Yeah, Dr. Saponia is looking forward to it. And we have in the news, we have a lot of in the news to cover. And um, before I get to in the news for a second, you know what, in next week, do you know what occurs on, uh, in seven days next week? You know what holiday? Valentine's chocolate? Day. Valentine's oh, Day. Right. Valentine's Day, right? Mm -hmm. So I thought to get us into the mood before we get into the news, which the first story is going to be about the love boat, I had a quick quiz for the, I, I wanted to see the panel's acuity. All right, now, what holiday are the most cards sent out each year? Mother's Day. Mother's Day. I would have said Mother's Day as well. Christmas Mother's Day. Christmas Day is absolutely correct. Interesting, Valentine's Day is second. One billion cards get sent out on Valentine's Day. Very good. I thought you were going to jump on Valentine's Day, but very good answer. Christmas is correct. Who sends 85% of the cards, men or women? Mm. Believe it or not, women. Women buy 85% and send the cards. I thought it was surprising. I thought men, you know, they expect men to do that. Okay, here's a little mythology one. Who is the son of Venus? Cupid. I know Dr. Yep. Cupid. This is, I got a very smart person here. <laughs> Cupid, Cupid is correct. And uh, finally, uh, for bonus, how many boxes of chocolate are sold as of last year? This is last year's. How many boxes of chocolate in the United States? 36 million. So, Give us a lot of business, Dr. Shagnovich, right? A little diabetes, a little everything. But um, dark chocolate we may talk about later. Now, in the news, now that we got Valentine's Day, the love boat. I don't know how many of you saw this. The cruise, I think it was down in Florida. They came in and thousands of people were sickened by a virus that causes the stomach flu. Norovirus is the name in it. It actually causes about 70,000 admissions to hospitals each year. It's the leading cause of food poisoning or, or stomach flu, if you want to call that. So I thought, for those who are taking a cruise, what do you do to prepare? You pack your bags. What do you pack? Do you pack this, Purell, or do you pack soap to, to cure yourself or to prevent yourself from getting norovirus? What do you guys think? Soap. Soap? Sanitizer. Sanitizer? Sanitizer. And the winner is soap, okay? Now what happens with the sanitizer is you end up washing the germs around the hand doesn't kill the germs to sanitize it and it stays on the hand it forms actually a thickened coat so the germs don't get out the soap forms this soapy mixture it gets rid of all the dead skin and all the bacteria so just remember if you're going to use that stuff that I threw out you got to use soap afterwards this is the key and if the people carry the soap with them and wash about five or six times a day they should have a good cruise I'll try and avoid raw fish and um, oysters and that's uh, and raw salad but, and also the other, the other creepy thing about this, somebody could touch a banister and walk away and then you come there like 30 minutes later and put your hand on the banister and, and then you put your fingers to your mouth and you're going to get it. So just try and practice good hygiene. Take a bar, a bar of soap with you. Now, toxic sugar. <coughs> Alcohol is regulated. Tobacco is regulated. Why shouldn't sugar be regulated? It's a question that uh, was posed this week by a group out in San Francisco that published a paper and they advocated regulating the sale of sugar to minors, cutting down on, on uh, commercials, cutting down on fast food restaurants and neighborhoods and so on. I'm just curious. I've got a, the panel here. What do you think, Dr. Shagnavich? 
Well, I think it would be very important to provide information and guidance. Um, do we want the government to uh, be involved in something as basic as what we have for breakfast? Uh, again, I, I don't think so. I, I would hope that people can figure out for themselves uh, what is and isn't uh, good for them. I think it's a good answer. I think um, the only thing that troubles me, you look at a can of soda and it has 11 te teaspoons of sugar. But you don't see that sugar. You just see this can of soda, and it's advertised you that if you drink this soda, it's going to make you cool. I'm just wondering if, if that doesn't need to be explained that on the bottle maybe saying that this has 11 teaspoons of sugar. I think, I think that's a very good idea. I think making that information more explicit may be helpful. Yes, I think so. Education is the, uh, is the thing to do. <coughs> As you know, the, the Surgeon General, General. says uh, uh, that smoking is uh, hazardous to your health, but people still smoke. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's education is the most important thing rather than... They also try taxing. Yeah, get a little tax on it. And maybe, maybe the manufacturers can make it taste as good without the sugar, you know, if they work on it a little bit. So anyway, it's an interesting thing. Coach of business class <coughs> now we get into the traveling theme. It used to be called coach class or economy class syndrome where you'd get clots in your legs that would go up to your lungs. New study came out, new guidelines came out today. It doesn't matter if you're in coach or business class. There was no increased incidence of clots in either um, to distinguish vi a business from coach. Also, it's interesting, they're saying that being hydrated, we used to tell people drink a lot of water, it'll prevent clots. It doesn't, but it's probably good because they said it makes you go to the bathroom so you'll get up and walk. Right. So that, that may have a benefit. And there was no harm for those who like alcohol. There was no increased risk of clots for people who had alcohol. Still want to drink you know, in, in moderation, but I thought it was interesting, the changes. I see Monsignor Bennett shaking his head today. He loves the uh, McAllen, 16 <laughs> year, I know that. Monsignor, right? Yeah. Hasn't missed one, sh he's a actually has missed one show, but in 16 seasons, one is not bad. Thank you. I have to give a shout out. Everywhere you go, you run into Ask the Doctor, loyal listeners, Bonnie Jolly, just for the name, it, makes, it brings a smile to your face with Bonnie Jolly. A very religious woman and a very brave woman who is um, very inspirational. I want to say hello to Bonnie Jolly. We also have Janie Odom, and for what it's worth, she likes to eat at the City Crab on Park Avenue, especially the key lime pie. So um, that's, I guess, take that as a recommendation. Brittany Hahnemann, I have to recommend one of our youngest viewers, got into Fontban High, Font High School, which is, probably, is, is a good accomplishment, great accomplishment, and I know she's going to be in, uh, great for the school. Okay, now we have a quiz to deal with, and I thought in keeping with the Valentine's Day, I would we'd ask the viewers a quiz. In which Shakespeare play is St. Valentine's Day mentioned? In which Shakespeare play is St. Valentine's mentioned? If you don't know the particular thing, just throw out one of Shakespeare's plays. Maybe you'll hit it right on the head. So we're going to take a short break now, give you a chance to think about it. The number to call is 718-499-6101. And our topics are internal medicine, lung disease, cardiology. Now you can also email your questions to askthedoctor at netny.net. Don't go far, we'll be right back. <laughs> Place your business on TV by becoming a sponsor to one of NET's family-friendly programs. See an increase in your revenue by reaching a potential audience of 4.3 million viewers in the tri-state area. We have a number of packages available and we'll even produce your commercial. For information, contact us at the number on your screen and get ready to see yourself on NET. Welcome back to Ask the Doctor, where our topics are internal medicine, lung disease, and cardiology. And before we get to find out who our first caller is, we're going to go to Dr. Saponia. We're going to meet her to find out a little bit about her. How are you doing, Dr. Saponia? Very good. Very good. And I hear you're um, a fan of parades. Yes. You know, I enjoyed uh, a Super Bowl party very much, you know, with the play. And uh, today, you know, I... Oh, you had a party? I mean, you went to a uh, yes, Super Bowl Yes, I went Bowl to, party. yeah. And I watched the game, and it was very Exciting good. Exciting game, right? Yeah, it was. Did you guys get to watch it? it was a very interesting game. I did. Yeah. A lot of violence in that game, though. They get killing one another, right? You see all those guys hit the floor? Yeah. Yeah, so. Anyway, um, tell us what internal medicine, a lot of people look at that. Is that family <laughs> medicine? Is that general? What, what, how would you explain internal medicine? Uh, internal medicine, usually, it's uh, people who uh, come to see the doctor, you know, from 18 to 118 to 118. So basically, all the diseases that happen in people, you know, that range, they come in first to primary care doctor, and after that doctor, 
sends patients to consultation to different uh, specialties. So like so what would you, you get a patient, he comes in with chest pain or high blood pressure, right. then you may ask Dr. Shagnovich for his opinion for the, car, for the heart related. Right, right. Or Dr. So Goody for the lung. Right. At yeah. first, you know, I have like differential diagnosis. I do some testing first and then I think whether I need to uh, ask Dr. Shagnovich to see the patient or Dr. Malik to see the patient. Mm -hmm who is gastroenterologist, or maybe just say that it's musculoskeletal pain, you have to take medications, don't worry, and uh, you're going to be fine. So Very good. Thanks. We've got a lot of calls lining up, so I'm going to move on to Dr. Goody. Hi. And um, I can't get a good night's sleep. I, uh, I don't know what to do. I, I'm up all night. What, what can you, how can you help me? Well, sleep disorder or insomnia is 30% of the people, one time or the other, will have that. So the most important thing is to do is have a schedule to go to bed, and early, whatever time you want to get up. So that will be the most important thing. To set a time, routine. Set a routine and stick to it. Mm -hmm. And never sleep in the daytime, that's for sure. Yeah, that's why in my office I'm sleeping all day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that will, that will what if, start. What if it. I snore and I keep my wife up? Well, snoring, again, everybody snores. So snoring is not a disease. Uh -huh. It's only the degree of snoring. If that keeps your wife awake, so it's called as actually spousal distress syndrome, uh -huh. snoring. So if that bothers SDS. your wife, yes. Yeah. <laughs> if, the, if the wife is bothered, you've got to do something about it. And there are simple things that you can do. Move right? out? <laughs> well, That's <laughs> I mean, uh, that really weight help. loss is the most important yeah. thing. And avoiding alcohol is the second important thing in that. So, so people are for serious, if people who are having trouble sleeping could, could use your services as well as lung, other lung problems. Yes. Very good. So we'll get into some questions. Dr. Shagnovich, I always like him because no matter how dire straits may be, he has a nice philosophical way of making you feel better. He's my doctor, and um, it's, I, enjoy, I enjoy his, um, his little saying, so to speak. So what, what's new? Well, actually, saying has become a very important part of medicine, I think, and certainly cardiology. I, I started out as a proceduralist, implanting stents into people, and now I spend most of my time talking to them. And in fact, I would argue that my subspecialty has moved out of the hospital. Uh, not entirely, of course, we still have to occasionally bring patients in, but generally for very targeted admissions procedures and very brief hospitalizations. Are doctors putting in stents when they're not really needed? Uh, isn't there an amendment I could take? <laughs> uh, uh, yes, as with anything else. Uh, it's important that there be the right relationship between your doctor and you. It's important that you understand the indications uh, and the doctor understand your symptoms so that you can get the best possible results with all yeah. the technology we have. And I remember last time you were talking about France, you were up in the mountain with your kids. Uh, my children speak uh, French, so I don't understand them in two languages. Uh, uh, and uh, we went <laughs> to the place where they could practice what they learn, I hope. So. Looking forward, we're going to go out to dinner to La Petite Oven, if any, Petite Oven, if anybody's heard of that restaurant in Bay Ridge. So now let's see, well now the all exciting part of the show is to try and find out who's our number one call. Is it Maddie? Is it Grace? Is it Patrick? Hello? Yes, it's Grace. Grace has gotten in again. Hi, Grace. Yes, how are you, Dr. Garner? Grace, how do you... Know? How's everybody? Uh, how do you do it every week, Grace? I don't know. Well, I just, uh, I finished Wheel of Fortune, and I go straight to Channel That's 30, and I, I, can, I did con contribute to the telethon. Thanks a lot, Grace. We appreciate that. Yeah, so I enjoy your program. I told them that. Excellent, excellent. And tell me, um, do you have a, you want to take a stab at the quiz before we get to your question? Yeah, I guess so. Okay, what, the question was on St. Valentine's Day, is me, the actual holiday is mentioned in one of Shakespeare's plays. Which one is it? I, I hope it's Romeo and Juliet. Grace says Romeo and Juliet. Judges? Oh, oh. Grace, another week you have to wait, another week. <laughs> okay. Yeah, last week... I said coyote, but my husband was right. He knew armadillo, and I right. should have said that. Yeah, last week was what is... Um, it was, uh, was uh, about groundhogs. Groundhogs Day in Texas. It's called armadillo day, because they use the armadillo there, not the groundhog. Grace, do you have, are you feeling well? Well, it's just my thumb. I went for two weeks ago to the doctor for my blood work, because I have thyroid problems. Okay. And that's where everything was normal. But I showed him my thumb. Uh, on my thumb, there's another nail growing over another nail. It's like a triangle coming out of my skin okay. over the nail. It's hard, and it's pointed like a triangle shape. All right, Grace, I'm going to... And I'm gonna, I'm my gonna, doctor thinks it might be a fungus, but there's a... He says there's, a, there's pills for it, but they could uh, damage your liver, so 
sure he didn't give me anything. He says, see how it gets along by itself. Let me just ask. Um, it's ugly looking. But Grace, th actually, bad uh, the nails being abnormal can be a sign of medical problems. Uh, Dr. S Dr. Shagnovich. Oh, I didn't know that. Many sure. different conditions. Certainly, uh, I'll ask our intern. Uh, pulmonologists can talk about change of the nails and chronic lung disease. Most of them is registered neurologist. They have uh, you know some problems with the nails, and then you know psoriasis. Uh, definitely, you know, it's an even diagnostic uh, sign in psoriasis, you know, changes uh, in the nails. Vitamin deficiency? Vitamin deficiency, yes. Uh, Dr. Cody, so any others? The, sometimes the iron deficiency can be seen on the nails as well. And sometimes it might uh, just be an infection. And yes, like uh, the lady was mentioning, the fungal infections are very common as well. Ray, so it's let us know, um, let us know how that works out. Yeah, he said to just leave it alone for a while, but I'm dipping it in. My daughter suggested uh, uh, vinegar, but it burned in her heart, so I stopped that. And now I'm, I'm dipping it in uh, witch hazel. All right. You, you know, it's interesting. We were talking before about the norovirus on the boat. The people who have artificial nails, actually the virus lodges inside the glue. The, with the I glue. never used nail polish for many, many years. I'm 78 now. I don't bother with nail polish anymore. That's all right. Excellent. Excellent, Grace. So we appreciate the call. Thanks a lot. All right. Take care. Good night, all. Good night. Good night. Let's go to Patrick. Hi, Patrick. How you doing, Dr. Varner? Good. What's going on tonight? Not too much, Dr. Varner. Can you lower that TV? Because I'm getting that feedback. OK, I get it. Hold on. Patrick, one of yeah. our frequent callers should know about this yeah. seven-second uh, delay. I have, yeah. I have a, a bad uh, panic attack today, Dr. Varner. Panic very, attack. Very, bad. very, very bad. And it's just like, uh, you know, I, I got, my eye got a little blurry, you know, and I, I got very, very nervous. So I'm not really, really not feeling too well. I'm sorry so, to hear that. But let me, yeah. let me just ask our panel to comment on how, how do you know it's a panic attack? You think you're getting a heart attack, you, you're having trouble breathing. How do you know it's not real? How do you know that it's just a panic attack and it's going to pass? It can be very challenging. Uh, and uh, so it's important uh, if you do have a chest pain syndrome uh, associated with these episodes to see your physician so that uh, uh, he or she can uh, take an electrocardiogram and do certain very simple appropriate screening tests that will help you uh, distinguish uh, your symptoms. Uh, ultimately, it comes down to the patient having to make these decisions often uh, in the middle of the night. Yeah. Do you have do you have patients like to go to you with panic attacks? Yes, I do, and it, it's most of the time, like uh, doctor was mentioning, it's uh, patients know what is panic attack, what's heart attack, okay. because we all have pain sometimes or the other, and and we know we know that uh, when to go to the doctor, when not to go to the doctor, and I'm not trying to suggest that. If you get a chest pain, don't go to the doctor or go to the not don't go to the emergency room. Mm -hmm. But if you have had these symptoms before and they are coming after and again and again and you have been checked and nothing shows up, it's reasonable to assume that it's the same thing again. Dr. Saponio, yeah. what kind of medication? I, Wait, well, let me see. Because then pills to treat this stuff, mm -hmm. right? Is you ever using that stuff? Um, Antidepressants and so on. Yes, I do. And basically, I do only like our first steps in treating uh, like panic attacks, anxiety, depression. And I really believe that, you know, psychiatrist is a specialty, you know, for these diseases. And um, if you just concentrate on uh, medications like benzodiazepines and other medications which, are, you know, sedate people mostly and not treating, you know, like underlying cause, so, you know, I don't think it's a good treatment. So next we week, Patrick, I'm sorry, well, next week we're having a psychiatrist on. Might be a good chance to... Could oh, I that would be great, Dr. Vana. That would be great. So anyway, then, Patrick, you have an answer to our quiz? I'm going to go, uh, I think he, he had a play called The Lear. A, a King O'Lear? Yeah. Okay. Okay, now, um, let's ask our judges. Is it King Lear? But you're close. You're very close. Okay, thank you. Thanks, guys. Have a good night. Thanks, Patrick. Be well. Take right. care. Right. Let's go to Ivan now, waiting patiently. Hi, Ivan. Ivan? He wasn't that patient. Hi, Dr. Garner. Yeah, there How he is. You? There he is. Hi, Ivan. Okay. Uh, Dr. Garner, I was just wondering. I have now, when I was treated years ago with Epstein-Barr, chronic fatigue syndrome. Okay. And what happened is, is that it comes and goes, but sometimes now when it comes on, you get up in the morning and very, very tired, headaches, aches and pains in the joints. And somebody told me
to take vitamin D3, 2,000 milligrams or even more a day, that would help. But the thing is, I'm limited because I have, I have irritable bowel syndrome, uh -huh. I have high blood pressure, and I have uh, thyroid. So I'm wondering what kind of medication or what kind of supplement would help me with those, with, you know, with uh, chronic fatigue right. to give me a little bit more pep. Okay, and again, chronic fatigue is a fairly specific syndrome. You have to have it a, um, a certain number of months in certain conditions. Uh, oh, I have it for a long time. Let's see what the panel thinks. Who, who wants to jump in? Well, chronic fatigue syndrome is, is a group of disorders in my judgment. It's not one thing. So like the, the gentleman was mentioning that he has thyroid problems. You, even the thyroid problem can make you fatigued. And of course, uh, now that I'm more interested in sleep apnea recently, the sleep disorders can make you fatigued. So if you don't sleep in the nighttime for whatever reason, especially if you have sleep apnea and you don't sleep, or even if you sleep, you're not sleeping really because you have sleep apnea. I, I have sleep apnea and I, I just got fitted with my new machine. Right. And I'm doing well with that. Right. Well, so then. Um, yeah, I mean, it's. You, 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 the panacea, a lot of people jump on vitamin D that it's going to make you feel better, and probably it's not going to make you feel better. But I think it's a good advice, you? you know, because I see some of the patients, you know, who really have vitamin D deficiency, mm -hmm. uh, diagnosed by a lab test, and then they start to take vitamin D. Many of them, they're saying that fatigue is getting improved. Yeah, really. So I would recommend sure. you to try. Da have you had a vitamin D level drawn? Yeah, I think uh, uh, calcium, is that what it shows on a blood test? No, it's a, it's a vitamin D level. Oh, vitamin D. And it's supposed D. to be between 30 and 100. And if you have less than 30, so you should take supplements. Okay. So before you, okay. b probably a good idea before you start to take it so you know what your, what your value is, yeah. and then you'll know mm -hmm. if it's going to help. Okay. Uh, okay, I Ivan. Also, I also have um, the um, thyroid. My doctor just put me up to 137 micrograms mm -hmm. from 125 they just elevated it so that was the reason for your fatigue you just didn't produce enough hormones to feel you alive so just wait four weeks and uh, draw your blood with your doctor and i'm sure you're going to be fine this is the most common reason of fatigue I hypothyroidism well. thank you doctor. take care ivan nice to hear from you okay we'll go to carol now hi carol hi where are you calling us from uh, queens which place i'm sorry queens Oh, Queens, Queens. Which part of Queens? Uh, Briarwood. Briarwood. That's right, right near St. Um, we hit Queens Boulevard? Right. And Union Turnpike? Right. Very good. What can you do out? What, wh where do you go out to eat there? I'm sorry? Where do you like to eat in Briarwood? Where do I like to eat? I eat in the flagship. Which place? It's a diner called the flagship. Oh, the flagship diner. Yes, yes. Right. I'm right around the corner from it. Very nice. Very nice. What can we do for you? Okay. Um, my problem is that about a month ago, I was in severe pain. I thought I was having a heart attack. About 2 o'clock, the pain started. By 6 o'clock, it was excruciating, so I called an ambulance. Um, I was taken to the hospital. They did a sonogram and said that I had gallstones that were blocking the duct and that I needed a surgery. They wanted to take me right up, which kind of freaked me out. So I told them, no, I needed time to think. Um, they admitted me to the hospital. I was in the hospital three days at which point the surgeon said his next appointment for surgery. They released me that Friday. I went in on Tuesday. When they released me, mm -hmm. um, they told me to come back in a couple of days and make an appointment for the surgery within two weeks. Um, I spoke to another doctor and told him that I was really not sure I wanted to have the surgery. So I changed my diet um, where I'm eating healthier foods, and I haven't had a problem since. Excellent. And, and I was just curious if this surgery, surgery is really needed, because they told me that it's going to come back. Okay. Um, first, I just want to address the issue of the chest pains you were having and, and, and heart attacks. And uh, if it lasts three hours to five hours, when do you begin to really think, oh, man, probably not heart attack is going on a certain number of hours? So. Well, once you reach a, a certain age, or if you have certain conditions, which may make it a little bit more likely that uh, you may develop a problem with your coronary arteries. As soon as you have chest pain that you think may be related to your heart, rather than waiting at home for four hours, it's prudent to call 911 and get yourself to the hospital. And with all the indignity of an emergency room, you are going to get 
uh, simple test that will help you and your doctors understand whether or not your heart is the issue. It can be confusing, and in your case, uh, it appears that your symptoms were related to your acute gallbladder attack, and they can recur, and it can be unpredictable, and this is where uh, your gastroenterologist and your surgeon will have to earn uh, their medal. I do want to say one thing, though. As you get older, the gallbladder attacks, first of all, they're not always symptomatic, and you, see you may have a problem, and they become much more serious. So it's not the same as when you're younger and you get a gallbladder attack. Older in a gallbladder attack is prone, you get infection that could get into the bloodstream and could kill you. Well, so they did tell me that it was, my gallbladder was infected and the wall was thickening up 63. Yeah, I, I mean, we, we, I, at least my opinion, I would go ahead with what the surgeon suggested in this case. Okay. Well, he kind of left it up in the air to me. That's why I'm questioning whether... I would go for it. I would go for Every, it. Go for it. I think the panel, yes. we, got a, we got four yeses. Going to Hollywood. Especially if you have diabetes or something like that. No, I have COPD and asthma, but I don't have I say get it the younger the better. While you're now in good you shape. You need to do it anyway. So it's the better when you're in stable condition to do your surgery. The next uh, attack, you know, you might need to have emergency surgery. There's going to be bigger scar, more complications. Do it now. Excellent. Thanks a lot, Carol. We're now going to, I'm going to repeat the quiz question one time, then go to Mike. Quiz question is, in what play is St. Valentine, in what Shakespeare play is St. Valentine's Day mentioned? In what Shakespeare play? Okay, we're going to go to Mike, who will be our last caller before the first break. Hi, Mike. Hiya. Mike, how you doing? Fine, Dr. Gunn. How are you? Good. Where are you calling us from? Brooklyn, New York. Yeah, how far? <laughs> far from here? No, uh, not far. On 20th Avenue, 74th. I mentioned to you about the last time where you're going to get to eat Mike, Mike's pan pizza right up there by the church. Yeah, okay. Very good. Very uh, good. Uh, uh, St. Dominic's. I know the place. Yeah. Uh, is, is the bowling alley not far from there? Yeah, uh, bowling alley, uh, uh, M Bowling, remember I told you about the Petraglia? The yes, last thing I remember Johnny that. Petraglia, we yeah, were having... Johnny Petraglia, yeah. And Excellent. We shell lanes, I guess. So what's, uh, what's good yeah. tonight? Well, it's good tonight, uh, a nice sandwich we had tonight. <laughs> What'd you eat? Oh, my wife said, let's make a nice, uh, with the, what was that? The, the turkey with, the, with a couple of slices of what? The mortadelle and some alpine lace with lettuce, tomatoes, and mayonnaise. What do you have? What do you what do you wash that down with? And we wash it down with uh, water and diet Pepsi. All right, that's that's good. That's, <laughs> that's good. So, uh, any any stomach aches yet? No, no okay. stomach aches. Uh, we had the uh, whole wheat pizza, uh, whole wheat uh, pasta. I'm sorry. Excellent, excellent. Yes. So, um, anything that we can help you with? Uh, well, from the last time I told you about the uh, arthritis I had in my lower back, I remember I explained to you my son-in-law was a is a, a, a uh, spine surgeon. Yes. And uh, uh, they told me to take vitamin uh, B6 for the, for the arthritis, and uh, it seems to have that much better now. Uh, How do you think? Let's see. I mean, I, Dr. Saponia, what do you think about vitamin B6? Uh, you know, usually they recommend vitamin B when there is some neurosystem involved, and if you have some nerve um, in the arthritis in the back hit, you know, then you know, it might help. But it's helping or not, you know, it's up, it to, it's up I mean, to you. Unless right. you overdo it, it can hurt if you take too much of it. It can cause yeah. actually nerve damage, yeah. taking too much. Right. I take one, like one pill every other day, a uh, 100 gram, I think. You know what the best thing is? I don't know how much you weigh, but just even losing five pounds and working well, out. We that's, talked about that. That's the best thing you could do. Yes, yeah, so I got to work out. Aside. I know, I have to do that because I quit smoking five years, and uh, now i got to get on that. So, Mike, hope to see you in the neighborhood one time. I wish to see you, too. Thank, Thank you. you. And we're going to go to the quiz one more time. Again, which Shakespeare play is St. Valentine's Day mentioned? Only one play that Shakespeare wrote. Which one is it? And think of all the love things that he wrote and so on. It's surprising that you only hear it once. What we're going to do now is we're going to take a short break. Now, when we come back, we're going to be discussing internal medicine, lung disease, cardiology. Our number is 718-499-6101. Don't go far. We'll be right back. Place your business on TV by becoming a sponsor to one of NET's family-friendly programs. See an increase in your revenue by reaching a potential audience of 4.3 million viewers in the tri-state area. We have a number of packages available and we'll even produce your commercial. For information, contact us at the number on your screen and get ready to see yourself on NET. Welcome back to Ask the Doctor, where our topics are internal medicine, lung disease, and cardiology. We have Dr. Anna Saponia, 
Dr. Madav Gudi, and Dr. Alexander Shagnovich. We're going to get back to our questions and our busy phones. I know we just were talking to Mike, and I, I was told that Mike probably had the answer to the quiz. So if he can get back in, in time to beat everyone else, but Mike, try and call back. I'm sorry we got you on a sidetrack with a turkey uh, sandwich, but um, try and call back. Let's go now to Liz. Hi, Liz. Hi, Dr. Gardner. How are you tonight? I'm good, thank you. Where are you calling us from? Staten Island. Which part? Emerson Hill. Dr. Goody's out in Staten Island. Oh, you know, okay. Do you know Emerson Hill out there? Yes, of course I know Emerson Hill. It's not far from where you live? Um, it's on the way to okay. my, where I live, yes. What do you, where do you like to eat in Staten Island? Uh, Cafe Luna, several places. Cafe Luda. What is Luna. that, it's Italian? Yes. Yeah, very nice. What is, what's their specialty? Um, oh, I don't know. What, there's several things there that are good. Okay. Now, Liz, I have word that you may have the answer to the quiz. I'm going to try, and I'm oh. going to say Hamlet. Well, first of all, we've got to play it up. We don't just do it like that, okay? So okay. do you think you have the answer to the quiz? Yes. Okay. What, the question was, what is the only play in which St. Valentine's Day is mentioned that William Shakespeare wrote? And what Ham do you say? I'm going to say Hamlet. She says Hamlet. Judges, could it be Hamlet? <laughs> oh, correct, correct. How did you know that? Um, I don't know. I just took a guess. <laughs> yeah. You know who said it? Who mentioned it? Um, no. <laughs> Ophelia. She was one of the characters in that play, Ophelia, and she said, tomorrow I'm going to be your Valentine's Day uh, person. Okay. Something like that. But anyway, so that's really great. Is this the first win for you? Yes, it is. The first win. Any p previous tries, or this is the first try? Um, I've tried to call in a couple of times, but couldn't get through. Now, you're going to get a beautiful plaque, handmade plaque, made in Japan. And Very it's, nice. And it's, where, where are you going to put it? I'm not sure yet. <laughs> think about it. Think about it. But not many people have, have this plaque. There's only about 25 in, hist in uh, given out in existence. Well, I'm honored. We will ho hope you enjoy it. Do you have I a, certainly will. Can I do anything else for you? That'll be it for tonight. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Have a good night. You too. Thank you. Be well. But now we're going to go to Robert. Hi, Robert. You know I feel bad about with Mike. I feel like I had the answer to the quiz, and then it got sidetracked somehow. Mike, yeah, sorry yeah. about that. But what about uh, Robert? Robert? Uh, yes, sir. How are you doing? Okay, I'm all right. Good. Where are you calling us from? I'm calling from the Bronx. Oh, the Bronx. We don't have many Bronx calls. Yankee fan? Yes, absolutely. Me too, me too. So what do you think? Um, Posada was a great player? Think he's going to get to Hall yeah. of Fame? He was, a, he was a good player. Not yeah. quite Hall of Fame, right? <laughs> yeah. So what can we no. do for you, Robert? Um, I've been a diabetic. Uh, for quite some time. Okay. And uh, I've been taking uh, metformin. Metformin. I want to know some of the side effects because. Um, Interesting story about metformin today that came out. Actually, that metformin was the drug of choice for people who couldn't be treated with diet and exercise. I don't know if it w what was previously. Dr. Zaponia, you want to take a stab at that? Metformin and he's uh, the diabetic. side effects of metformin. Yeah. I, are you interested in side effects of metformin? Robert, you want to know about the side effects? You want to know about the drug? Yeah, the side effects. I'm taking five, 500 uh, milligrams in the morning, 500 in the evening. Okay. It's a very good drug, and uh, it's um, one of not many medications in diabetes that uh, uh, doesn't give you gain weight. One good thing. The side effects, it can be GI tract. You might have, like, diarrhea. Um, then if you have problem with the kidney, you know, you should not take metformin, so probably you don't have it. So that's why doctor put you on it. Uh, you just need to do blood test and uh, make sure that your kidney is in uh, normal shape. And uh, basically, it's a good uh, tolerated medication. Dr. Uh, Goody, do you have many patients on metformin? Yes. yes. Uh, most if, I, if, uh, if I come to you and I'm overweight and my blood sugar is, I don't know, 200, and I try my best to lose weight, I don't. Do you jump? Is that the first pill you use? Yeah, 200 is a little too high to, to start just with the metformin. Mm -hmm. However, yes, that's the first uh, uh, drug I always use for the diabetic mm -hmm. patients. And I want to ask Dr. Shagnovich, diabetics, what kind of special problems do, do they pose to the cardiologist? Oh, diabetes is, I always tell patients that diabetes is, is like living in a bad neighborhood. Uh, you need to have a few more locks and maybe bars on your windows. You need to take your risks much more seriously because the likelihood of your developing certain problems with your blood vessels is much higher. And so to a cardiologist, diabetes is really a disease of blood vessels and we help patients take care of their cir circulation. We help them lower their cholesterol a bit more aggressively than their neighbors perhaps. 
we make sure that their blood pressure is controlled a little bit more tightly than uh, uh, perhaps someone else's using certain classes of medications that have been shown to be beneficial in diabetes. And just as Dr. Garner, we remind patients that when they get contrast-based tests and they are on metformin, some of them may need to hold metformin for a day or two. Robert, we hope that helps you. I think the bottom line was it's a pretty safe drug, so maybe an occasional minor annoyance, maybe stomach problems and stuff, but it sounds like it's, it's on the right track. Okay, Robert, great to hear from you from the Bronx. So we don't actually go all the way into the Bronx, so I'm not sure how Robert got it, but it's excellent. I'm glad to hear from him. Walter. Yeah. Hi, Walter. How are you tonight? Okay. Where are you calling us from? Brooklyn. Which part? Uh, like Flatbush. Oh, right around Flatbush, yeah. Yeah, like Flatlands, Flatbush, yeah. Flatbush. You got some nice pizza places near there, a couple of Italian restaurants? Yeah, well, there is. There's, uh, there's La Villa. La Villa? La Villa's good. But the restaurant that my, my wife and I go to, we go to at least once a week, is called Tassie Bay. It's on Coney Island Avenue. It's a Turkish restaurant. It's the greatest restaurant there is. Where is it near? Which street? Like Avenue it's Y? It's on Coney Island Avenue between P and Quentin. Between P and Quentin. Baby, Tassie Baby is the name of it. Tassie P Baby. Yeah, very good. Very interesting. There was another the great one. It's a good service. You got like six waiters take care. They all like take care of you. You don't have to, if your glass is empty, they fill it. If you need something, they're, they're on top. It's a very good restaurant. We go there a lot. You get a little glass of wine in there? Yeah, yeah. Nice. Really well, it's nice because you can bring your own wine. Oh, you can. And I like we that. We go across bring... the street. There's a liquor store. We get a bottle of Turkish wine, and we bring it in. I have to be careful. They don't charge me for it because it's the same wine that they, they serve when you pour oh, they a, serving a bottle. Yeah. All right, they're the very understanding. They charge you thirty dollars, and it's eight bucks across the street. And maybe you could bring a few bottles and sell it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, so what can we do for you? Yeah, I wanted to ask him what the ischemia is. Okay. The doctor uh, told me I had ischemia, and you know, was, I I went to hit the doctor because my my uh, my regular doctor told me that my my EKG changed very slightly. So okay. So he sent me over to a. Um, Let's a see what test. ischemia, ischemia. ischemia. Yeah, that's what he said, ischemia. Um, ischemia simply means that some tissue may not get as much oxygen or nutrients as it right. needs. And to a cardiologist, it typically refers to the heart muscle not getting as much oxygen as uh, it may require. Uh, and since the heart cannot take days off, or, uh, it's important for us to make sure the blood supply to the heart muscle is as good as it can be. Yeah. So your they doctor told me, they told me, my doctor told me that, uh, no, actually I, t I spoke to my nutritionist and he told me that most people my age have that. I'm 72. Well, be that as it may, it's still very, it's very important for your doctors to help you understand how significant this condition is in your case. And there are certain medications that are widely accepted as beneficial. Uh, that you should probably be on if they're not contraindicated. Thanks a lot for the call. We appreciate that. And Lisa. Hi, how are you? How are you, Lisa? Yes. Lisa, where are you calling us from tonight? Uh, Sheepshead Bay. Oh, Sheepshead Bay. I love it out there. You take a little stroll in this nice weather? It's, it's beautiful out tonight. Really nice to walk out there. Full moon almost. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. Do you, have, do you ever eat the fish when the boats come in? Excuse me? Do you ever buy fish from the boats that come in, those fishing boats? No, but I see people. It's very good. Have you guys ever done that? No. You buy a couple. It's nice. Of, it's really nice, you know. It is. But it, it is. It's as long as a little mercury doesn't hurt, right? <laughs> what can we do for you? Um, I have a question. It's for my husband. He is 50 years old, and he's in good general health. Um, he's got this this problem for ongoing for years. Um, he when he wakes up in the morning where normally people are groggy for 5 or 10 minutes, maybe 15 or 20 minutes. He is generally groggy, can't really step out of it for, I'd say, an hour to an hour and a half. What is he and doing all night? Nothing. Oh, okay. he's, always, he's always been like this. I don't understand this. So let's ask yeah. Dr. Um, let me ask Dr. Goody here. Tell well, us about this sleep problem. Well, if, if he sleeps enough in the nighttime, yes? Well, He's been an insomniac for the last few years, but even before that, when he wasn't having sleeping problems, he just okay. 
can wake up. Okay, one of the common causes of uh, feeling sleepy in the morning is that you didn't sleep enough. Right. And of course, of course. the second common cause is the sleep apnea, it's called, right? Even if you sleep seven, eight hours, you're really being aroused every so often, every 10, ten minutes sometimes. And you actually, so, you feel like you can't breathe. Yes, and that's what wakes up the brains. Uh -huh. And uh, one person is not aware that he's waking up, but it's called an arousal. So the brain doesn't rest. Well, wouldn't Lisa notice this if she's alongside, if she'd hear some noises, some, see something? Usually they have snoring, yes. And right. some people do notice that uh, the person stops breathing during the night or he may wake up with the choking feeling and things like that. So He seems to sleep um, pretty peacefully, actually. Um, I, I just don't understand it. His blood work up is fine. Well, Lisa, I'm going to move, but I have to ask Dr. Goody one thing. What is the number of hours of sleep that somebody requires? Average number to just to answer is seven hours. Seven However, hours. Yes. Different people require different amounts. How much is he getting, Lisa? It varies anywhere, anywhere from four hours to ten hours. So maybe certain days he's not getting enough sleep. Enough sleep. Right. So it's interesting. Why don't you keep a little diary and then, you know, is that right? Write yes, down? sleep diary it's called, yes. That's a good idea. And call us back, okay? Let us know. Okay, thank okay. you so much. Take care. We have an email from Patty in Staten Island. Let's get to that. Hi, Mom. Oh, my mom, excuse me. Hi, my mom is 75 years old and has COPD and was just released from the hospital with a lung infection. She's been hospitalized many times before for the same condition, but this time she was given oxygen to go home. Her pulmonologist said she had severe COPD, and on his progress notes it says, my question is, what are the signs of the last stages of the disease? Oh, so she's got a very serious case and she's concerned. She saw on a sign on a progress note about final stages of COPD. I've got my two doctors here. What do you? Go ahead. I think that's Dr. Goody, your pulmonologist. Okay. So the most important symptom of COPD, of course, is shortness of breath. And this shortness of breath comes be because you are unable to put enough oxygen into the bloodstream. And the second important uh, function of the lung is to take away the carbon dioxide that we produce. And so if it is severe enough, n you not only have lack of oxygen, but you also build up carbon dioxide. And uh, if you build up carbon dioxide, suddenly, though, you can become very comatose, and that's called uh, acute respiratory failure. So most of the time, severity depends on how short of breath you are. So thank you for that, and I hope that helps you. And now we're going to go to Rosemarie. Where's Rosemarie waiting for us? She's waiting over here on line three. Hi, Rosemarie. Oh, hi, Doctor. How are you? Very good. We didn't hear from you for a couple I, of weeks. Well, I can't even get through. I mean, you're so popular this now. This is becoming so. <laughs> what, one now of you're our, getting too popular. One of our favorite um, <laughs> spokesperson. And I can't get through. Did you call the telethon this weekend? Oh, I did, and I pledged money. Excellent. You know, in every your name, <laughs> in the doctor's name in the show. I said, this is for the doctor's show. Excellent, excellent. I, and you were on, but I, of course, I didn't get to talk to you. Uh, I, I, <laughs> next <laughs> time I have were, to know. You were taking calls, remember? Yeah, I know. I took, yeah, there was well, some see, I can't get you on the telephone. I can't get uh, you on here. But, um, Rose, it's always good to hear from you. Tell <laughs> uh, us a little bit about what's going well, on. It's the hiatal hernia <laughs> that okay. I have. Basically, I'm trying to find out what I can do, you know, what foods I should avoid, Sometimes it's spasms, which okay. I went to the doctor, it's not my heart, it's, you know, my blood pressure is good, 118 over 70. Woo. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he's trying to reassure me, but, you know, it's a funny kind of feeling that you get. It's not really in the upper chest, but it's like right by the sternum, and it's not really a, I don't know, it's not a pain, but it's an annoying kind of feeling, and I don't know what to do to stop it or... What I should eat? He told me drink water, like cold water, and jump up and down or something. I don't yeah. know. Uh, but I mean, it's Dr. Saponia. Does she have to jump up and down? <laughs> what is that? Uh, I'm not sure about uh, jumping out. <laughs> and I know that there is some lifestyle modifications that you could uh, do to mm -hmm. alleviate the pain. So one thing, you have to uh, eat small portions. Don't eat uh, a lot to, uh, like, stretch your stomach. Mm -hmm. Then don't uh, eat and uh, lay down after that and smoking it's not good uh, and in terms of food the tomato based sauces um, spices uh -huh. alcohol and um, 
you know, like a greasy food. Mm. This is what, uh, okay. you know, it's not agreeable, you know, with this uh, okay. sort of, you know, condition. Okay. But most likely, you know, lifestyle modification. Don't eat a lot. Right. And don't eat and lay down. Okay. So Rosemary, thank you very <laughs> thank much. Thank you. We'll see you. Thanks a lot. Bye. Have a great, have a great okay, week. Okay, you too. Bye. Well, we gotta take, we got to pay bills here, so we're going to take a short break, and when we come back, we're going to be going to your questions again. We're going to do our rapid-fire segment, where we, we go right around the table and try and get as many questions answered as possible. The topics are internal medicine, lung disease, and cardiology. We'll be right back. <laughs> Place your business on TV by becoming a sponsor to one of NET's family-friendly programs. See an increase in your revenue by reaching a potential audience of 4.3 million viewers in the tri-state area. We have a number of packages available and we'll even produce your commercial. For information, contact us at the number on your screen and get ready to see yourself on NET. And welcome back to Ask the Doctor, where our topics are internal medicine, lung disease, and cardiology. And we're entering our rapid fire segment, which we try and answer the question within one minute. We're going to start with Dr. Saponia and go across the, until we finish the Dr. Shagnovich, and then we'll start at it again. So let's see who's our first caller in the rapid fire. Hi, Mike. Yes. Mike, it was a bad break. Oh, okay. <laughs> but uh, we try to help. What, what question do you have? I got a question on, on uh Venomous Doppler test they want to give me? I wouldn't know what's the procedure and what's that Say it about. again, Mike. I missed it. Say it. Oh, it's called Venice Doppler? Oh, Venus Doppler. Venus Doppler. Venice yes. is another. Venus Doppler and yes. um, what is it? That's Cupid's mother, right? Okay. <laughs> From before. Well, let's... Um, yeah. I, Dr. Saponia. Venus Doppler, Thank you. it's a test that, uh, um, you know, basically the goal is to rule out uh, blood uh, clots in the veins. And it's a simple test, it's ultrasound, it's not painful, and uh, you know, you will see what kind of uh, like peripheral vascular disease or like veins uh, disease you might have. Yeah, so this will help you if you're on one of those planes and you happen to get the clots in the leg. Okay. This will pick it up, okay? I got you. Thank you so Have a great much. week. You too, bye. Bye. We're so far rapid, right? Is it rapid? Hi, Millie. Yes, hi. Millie, how are you tonight? I'm good, thank you. Where are you calling us from? Brooklyn, New York. Okay, Dr. Goody is waiting to take your question. What is it? Okay, I don't have a question. I just wanted to thank him so much. Dr. Goody. Dr. Goody, she wanted to thank you. Thank Brian. you. He has been our family doctor for over 30 years, and he is unbelievable. He, wow. When you leave his Goody. office, you just feel so content because he takes the time and patience to listen to everyone. That's Thanks really nice of you to call Goody. in, Millie. My Thank God, you. I'm nervous as it is. You're <laughs> making me more nervous. Oh, you look great up there. <laughs> right. He's a great man. Thanks for uh, the rapid fire question or compliment. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that was great. Very nice. Viola. Viola. Hi, good night. How are you, Viola? Hi, good night. I'm pretty much okay, but I'm... Um, Hi, my question is... It's for um, Dr. Shaknovich. I'm having breast cancer. This is going to be answered by Dr. Shaknovich. What's the question? I'm having breast cancer, and I'm supposed to be doing surgery sometime soon, but I don't want to lose my breast. What do you think is the best option for me? Uh, uh, that's, uh, I'm sorry you have this condition. It's uh, fortunate that there have been really remarkable advances in diagnosis and management, uh, and uh, the, the choices uh, you're facing are difficult, but with the help of a good surgeon, you should be able to hear uh, answers that ho hopefully will be acceptable. S uh, they can do uh, a limited uh, uh, removal of breast tissue, and certainly they've, they can reconstruct the breast uh, with uh, uh, remarkable cosmetic results. And this should is that I second and third opinion time. That if should one I do the, the reconstruction immediately or after? Well, these are very technical questions, and only doctors who are familiar with your scans and the precise location and extent of the, uh, the, uh, the growth uh, um, can answer these questions in any meaningful way. So I would strongly suggest that you go to the surgeon uh, and ask uh, uh, these very questions and make sure that you understand the answers. and. Uh, Discuss them with your family and other doctors if necessary. Yeah. Please, I'll get a second opinion on that to see if perhaps another approach could be tried. Very important. And we wish you the best of luck and health. And please okay, call us back. You. Bye, Viola. Angelina. Yeah. How are you today? I'm okay. Okay, now Dr. Saponia is waiting to take your question. So what is it? Uh, my question is, 
Uh, uh, hi. Good evening. Good evening. Um, in the last two or five years, I have got uh, six pneumonias. And in my mucus, doctor find uh, bacteria. And uh, this, he told me this is okay, but some people uh, have problem with this bacteria. And he told me to get three antibiotics during one year. Okay, so Angelina. How do, do you, this is okay to take the same antibiotic three at the, the same time during one year. Uh, what antibiotics did he give you? Antibiotic, uh, it, uh, it, uh, it, uh, mm -hmm. uh, then rifugutin and etambutol. Yes, you know, I actually, you know, understand what kind of uh, bacteria is that. It's called, uh, you know, MAC probably. And this is exactly the treatment, you know, for at least nine months you have to be on these three medications. So it's a, yeah, it's a standard of care a for that. The TB? Yeah. It's not, it's not TB, no. most likely. It's like MAC complex. Interesting and, uh, question. Yeah. This is what I So think. she's on the right track? Yeah, I think so. So, yeah. so uh, you're on, th we're on the right track, okay? Yeah, but, but it's okay to take every day three antibiotics to get it during one year. You know, yes, it is. Yeah. It's correct. It's already proven it's that correct. it's working. Yeah, it's working. And to, to diminish uh, uh, side effects, you need to take vitamin B. You know, doctors will tell you, you know, what, for, um, you know, what, what kind of side effects you need to look for in case it will develop. But basically, it's a standard of care. And I have patients who want at least nine months of this uh, treatment doing well. Beautiful. Uh, infection result. Great news. Great news out there. Next door to Mia in line four. For Dr. Goody, Mia, what do you have? Oh, hello. Hi, how are Hi. you, Mia? Hi. Mia? Because Mia's listening to the TV and she's here in the back. <laughs> Mia? No, my name is Meg. Oh, Meg, Meg. Okay. Did we ever called Mia? No. Okay. What can we do for you? Yeah, uh, my brother, you know, he has uh, a tumor on his lung. Okay. Tumor, yeah. tumor on the lung. What's and the question? Uh, one day he feels great and the next day he feels miserable, so I don't understand that. And the doctor told him that he cannot give him chemo at this point, but if he, he starts bleeding or whatever, then he's going to give him chemo. And okay. I, Let me ask Dr. Goody. He's got a tumor in the lung. How old is he? He's uh, 68. A smoker? No. So non-smoker. Never smoked? He smoked for the first 20 or 30 years of his life. Okay. So had smoked in the past. They can't give him chemotherapy unless he starts to bleed? Is that what you said? Yeah. Okay, Dr. Goody. Um, when one starts bleeding from a tumor of the lung, they usually give radiation treatment to stop the uh, uh, bleeding. Uh, the chemotherapy is given to patients who can tolerate it. That's the most important thing. If he is able to tolerate the chemotherapy, that's the only time the chemotherapy is given. I'm so sorry. That's our last question. We have no more time left, but call us back next week and we'll, we'll try and bring that into discussion early on. And that's it for this episode of Ask the Doc. Flew by, right, Dr. Saponia? Yeah, yeah, that's true. I'd like to thank Dr. Anna Saponia, Dr. Madhav Goody, and Dr. Alexander Shaknovich for coming in. And we hope we were able to help you. It's good to remember you should always be proactive about your own health. Just like the last, the last one with the breast, uh, Dr. Shaknovich. Speak to your doctors about your concerns. Go for second or even third opinions. Visit our website at netny.net slash doctor. Here you can read the weekly tablet column, can watch past episodes, you have a lot of fun on that. I want to thank Dr. Linda Lapatosa, our quiz master, and I want to thank all of you for your questions. Also, don't forget to tune in tonight at 10 o'clock for the encore presentation of last week's show. It was a good one. Next week, we're going to talk about cardiology, psychiatry, interesting husband and wife team, and geriatric medicine. Goodbye, stay healthy, and I'll see you in the tablet.